Previously on The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 1. The world was hit by a fungal infection that has caused global pandemic. Ellie, Joel, and Tess set out to, find, to the west to find Bill and Frank, and there are two fireflies that are going to help Ellie get to medical research scientists. For this episode, I really, well, for, I'm really, really loving this show. That's the first one. Um, I really liked the intro in Indonesia because mm -hmm. they didn't do any of that like awkward switch to English that they sometimes do. No, they were right. Indonesian people. And it mm -hmm. felt really plausible. Uh, I was, <laughs> when we get back to the United States in you know, post-apocalyptic Boston, I was annoyed with some of uh, Joel and Tess's procedures while they're moving around. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah. The visuals were awesome. Uh, like the, the post-apocalyptic cityscapes and everything, they felt real. Yeah. Uh, there was some tension as well. Really, really enjoyed the tension in the episode. Made my skin crawl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and they introduced the fungus internet, which is very important. You know, very cool. Fungus internet. That's an awesome way to say that. Fungus internet. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is what they said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my opinion of this episode, Tess, Tess is the gem of the series. She's like level-headed, stalwart. She's super calm. She solves problems. And she has like, she has, she like puts together the vision that Ellie could be the savior of humanity. Like, I really like Tess. I hope she like does super cool stuff. In fact, I would watch a spinoff called The Last of Us, The Adventures of of um Tess. <laughs> I would I, I would watch a spin-off called The Last of Us Adventures of Tess. And Joel can just come in sometimes. He's not as interesting to me as Tess. Tess is super awesome. Uh Clickers, they did a very good job with Clickers. Like I, I watched the the credits at the end and they had pulled in fans from the game. So fans that have like they spent time learning how the clickers move because you have to like avoid them, right? So like the movements were just they were they were crisp. They're they're creepy and it it felt good. And Ellie, she's fun in this episode. She's such a teenage girl. Like, what do I mean by this? I mean, her words are devastating. <laughs> like, if you want to, if you want to have your feelings hurt, piss off a teenage girl. She'll fuck you up with words. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about teenagers is they haven't quite figured out adults are human yet, and they'll just go <laughs> savagery, 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 and they're like, oh. I'm, uh, <laughs> my god i'm hurt do i really want to teach this little league team like i don't want to coach them anymore <laughs> they hurt all right ready to do it let's do it the last of us season one episode one that's wrong the last of us season one episode two let's do it Ooh, yes this this is in jakarta this is in jakarta this is the mycologist on the right and what looks to be one of the earliest um, patients, one of the earliest victims of the, the fungus. What did they say? It was she, this uh, victim here was in a worker in like a flower factory or something? Oh yeah, flower and grain or something. Yeah. And then the mycologist like, that's a perfect breeding ground for for mushrooms, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And also the, I mean, we blanked out some of her parts here, but it yeah. felt real because, you know, there's a, you need to examine the entire body. So it really felt real i was legit like, uncomfortable i was like yeah this is too real this yeah seeing the face i'm like please cover her face <laughs> i don't <laughs> like this yeah it's like oh auntie. Uh, i think if we go to the left oh this creepy soap oh my god yeah they have like the i guess that's inspired by the insect i forget the name of the fungus right. cordyceps Cor cordyceps militaris is one of them yeah. and cordyceps is like the family of and yeah they do this yeah. they like grow out of all the orifices mm -hmm. of the animal mm -hmm. to spread mm -hmm. it's terrible brutal nature yeah. ugh. if you look up i think the first time i saw it was on the planet earth bbc planet earth right and so there's this this fungus that will infect insects like in the, in the example is ants and it'll make them walk up trees so that when they sporulate the spores can go farther like really like zombie yeah. mind control manipulation yeah. stuff. Um, and not only that, but there's a variety of these mushrooms and it's like specialized per species of insect. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and they do this creepy stuff where it's like, it'll drill a hole out of your head and then fruit and then spores. Are super oh, yeah. creepy. Just brutality. Thanks Oof. nature. Thanks nature. Ooh, this is the mycologist, the mycology. I mean, the, the fungus specialist in, in Jakarta. Yeah, and I was, she, 
the psychologist, the military guy or the, the police guy asked her, you know, what can we do? And she's like, there is no medicine. There is no vaccine. Just start bombing the shit out of stuff. Right. Like, whoa, 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 lady, Let's pump whoa, the lady. Brakes. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Let's pump the brakes on destroying everything. <laughs> yeah, you, you, they didn't go back to like the day before, but that actually was her opinion anyway. The society has been going yeah. downhill ever since. Like, let's see. Yeah. she was going to say that no matter what. <laughs> and it's like to totally give up on the idea of a medicine or a vaccine or whatever. Right. I, it was like we got a problem here to solve. Let's okay. Once the shock has left, let's get to work. You know? there, there's there's no medicine. There's no vaccine right now, <laughs> but maybe we can try to make one. <laughs> You know what we should do? We should go find an expert in fungus and ask her if she could think of any ways to come up with a medicine or vaccine or something. Put a team together. Yeah. But what if they can't? I guess the solution would be to to bomb them. I mean, I, I guess mean, it is right. There's there's a trade off, right? So if if like the if the viral vector is going way too fast, you got you got to shut it down. You got to close off borders. I don't know if you need to bomb it. Maybe you bomb in a circle to like close off the city so people don't leave. But at some point, you might have to kill people to stop the, the pandemic. I, I agree with that. And, and quarantine would be very important. Um, yeah. But she doesn't, I don't know if she's aware she of how fast it's going to spread at this point. You know, that's right. It's just a that's localized right. infection. So instead of saying isolate them or like get the army in there and isolate them, she's like, just nuke it. You know what? Nuke it. It's the only Maybe. way to be sure. That's true. I mean, that is true. Actually, is that true? Okay, nu Okay, for sure if you nuke it, everything, the energy intensity is so fast that things burn up. But it's possible also that bombs could help move this thing faster. Like if, you're, if your explosion isn't enough to incinerate, to break things apart, then it just pushes a wind out and then spores are even faster out. Right, so even if it destroys like 99.9% .9 of spores mm -hmm. in the inferno, great. But that 0.1% of spores are now getting blasted around the world and, and up in the upper atmosphere. So it's literally up in the upper atmosphere and then hitting the jet stream. And now it's raining down on everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that could make it even worse. Good. With, with explosions, surprising amount of stuff survives explosions. It's not just like complete obliteration, you know? Hmm. Ah, so yeah. like the tank... If you if you explode a tank, it may blow up, and so the tank is gone. But like, say there was a bunch of rations in there, those might survive. Exactly. Yeah. Depending on exactly the details of the explosion, you know, stuff can survive. Hmm. Not a guarantee. Good point. Yeah. That being said, I do like her her initiative here. <laughs> you see, see how the military guys like I asked you for help <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you want us to bomb things like that was my solution not your solution what the heck I was going to bomb the place then I was like no no I should ask a mycologist <laughs> and she's like bomb the place she's like bomb it, bomb it bomb where's it. the button I'll push it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this scene so I, you know she like wakes up on like the bed of flowers yeah beautiful when he when humanity ceases to exist or is significantly reduced in numbers, nature is going to thrive. Yeah. And even in this little area of this little building, it's thriving. Mm -hmm. And the, the window for light and for water to come into this little patch. And you need to have like enough dirt accumulated there. Like it worked though. And life, life does do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I think I read a book long time ago about how quickly life and nature would take over cities if humans disappeared and it's extremely quickly mm -hmm. you know? remember when pandemic started and like so people weren't going around in the cities and then deer and foxes came back into the city like, mm -hmm. they adapted pretty quickly yeah yeah for sure <laughs> oh, oh, this <laughs> i was just upset with her with ellie here for how casual she was with this sandwich I mean, it's not right. just like you can go down to the local 7-Eleven and get another sandwich. This is it. Right. right. The rest of it. So she was like not making it precious enough. She kind of like puts it right. down casually. I, right. I was like, no, precious that, sandwich. 
that feels like the mentality of someone that can get more sandwiches on anytime they want. Who cares? That's right throwing crumbles away who cares but like this this feels like it should be precious food she like savor every bite that's right even if maybe she can get food elsewhere she's confident in that the the quality of this sandwich looks extremely high it's got sauce it's got bread that's moist and not dry chicken yeah oh my god actually that the, the fact that it's chicken made me, and if I'm smugglers, it made me think about like people, people have chicken coops in their homes. So I guess, I guess where would one acquire knowledge on how to do that chicken homesteading? Uh, the library. You know what? That's right. I would go to the library too. There's probably lots of books there about that. If you're lucky, you might run into somebody who knows what they're doing, like raising chickens. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to take it on chance, then go to the library. There might be some books there. Also, what if it takes several months to learn how to raise chickens from this chicken master, but <laughs> but they get infected? So now that knowledge is completely lost. It needs to be mm -hmm. recorded, already recorded, in the library. In the library. And including recipes for bread and sauces and all kinds of stuff to help make your life a little bit better. Hmm. Just a little bit of chicken soup for the teenage soul. Just right there in the library. Yeah. Don't waste your sandwiches, Ellie. Don't waste your sandwiches, Ellie. Oh, oh, I also saw this. Strategically unwise. Yeah. I they opened the door to the outside. So mm -hmm. so they had just woken up. Ellie went to go take a shit. She comes back. And then they like get all their stuff up and now they're gonna head outside. Yeah. And Joel was very quick to open He's the door. Like... They didn't check outside. They made a bunch of noise before they opened the door. And then if there was a zombie or pack of zombies right outside. What was their plan? They didn't seem to be communicating. They weren't on the same page. I was like, ah. That's right. They didn't That's right. have guns at the ready. They need some small squad tactics. Yeah. Even just a quick five minutes, be like, okay, we're going to open the door and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to check over there. You're going to check over there. You check behind us. If something That's happens, right. we immediately close the door and we go upstairs. I don't know. But a quick five minute meeting would, would have done the job. Even 30 seconds. I, I really liked what you said about, about their sight vectors or their sight lines. It's like, I'm going to look right, left. I pointed straight in front of you. One. I'm going to point straight. <laughs> I'm going to point left. You point right. And that way we can just flash the door open, close, and then just look around. That way we like mm -hmm. minimize our exposure time. That's right. What I noticed about this scene was he used the bookshelf to, to barricade the door. But, but look where that bookshelf is. Okay, okay. Okay. The door opens outward. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, what? Right? Well, I guess it's like a clothesline hazard, but... And they're outside. Yeah, this door opens outward. That bookshelf was not <laughs> going to provide any type of blocking. Somebody could open the door <laughs> outward. I didn't and, even notice that, but that's an, an excellent point. That bookshelf was doing nothing. Right. <laughs> even if if somebody had opened the door and that bookshelf shelf was tipped over they would just knock it over it wasn't even like the yeah. long way that would secure it in it, right. it, would, just, it would just tip over joel it, get to the I, library <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll tell you how to secure a door with a bookshelf there is a book about that yeah okay. I, mean, I don't know actually i don't really go to the library that often so, so it might be so so if this was a situation you're, you found a nice room, but the door opens outward. Do you find a new room with a better door? Or do so. you like barricade the door a little bit more? So there's enough obstacles that you have enough time to react. Ah, so I would, so what I would do, I was, I would go to a door where the door opened inward. Cause then I can jam the door. Um, if, mm -hmm. if like this, somebody could open from the outside and then just hack away at whatever's inside. That being said, if I don't have the option, and yeah, pile as much shit in front of the door as you can, because at least it slows people down. Yeah. I wonder if you could have done some like rope action where you like rope on the doorknob and then rope somewhere on an anchor. Ooh. So someone tries to open it, it gets stopped under tension. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to sleep with a door opening outward now that you think it, now that you mention it. Yeah. Now you're going to think about it when you're at hotels, motels, even holiday inns. This building, just the sight of this building, I, what is going on? That, that's scary. That's super scary. Yeah. And I think this is realistic because I think that a, a building can topple. 
but because it has yeah. this like grid 3d grid of tension grabbers dispersion yep. dispersioners that it can actually hold itself together in this precarious position and not just fall i think that's ah, plausible you're, you're saying the like so conk so a lot of this tall building construction is steel rebar and concrete concrete is very good at handling compression and steel is very good at handling tension so pulling so I guess in this instance, the I, I guess we're saying that the rebar structure inside this is strong enough to hold it at this oblique angle. Right. Bye bye. For for twenty, thirty years, maybe eventually it will collapse. But sure, sure. Yeah. But it's, it's cool. just sitting there. Yeah. Look how look how nature is reclaiming this thing. Yeah. I love it. Makes sense. I was a I was a little confused about this. They were like, "This is the bombs," and I was like, "This is a tiny bomb, it's tiny. isn't right. it?" This we is have, a tiny we bomb. Have, yeah, we have nukes available to do this for to cities. Uh -huh. We also have much bigger munitions. This seems like you're gonna have to drop a lot of bombs and take out a city like Boston. By nukes, you mean like tactical nukes, like small nukes, like, or do you mean like I mean, nuke nuke and like level the whole city? Like, I mean, if you want if. If the if the world is going to shit, and the pandemic is taking over, and it's desperation time, nuke nukes are on the table, right? It's at that point it's triage for the species. Yeah. Even if ten percent has to die in a single bomb, like if it saves ninety percent, I guess mm -hmm. so, right? Like, so they they show the the fungus to the mycologist after a 20 minute examination she's like bomb it bomb it and then and then the u.s military is like we'll just bomb them with 500 pounders ding 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 ding, ding. Like, the only way i thought that this made sense in terms of like there the the air force was bombing was maybe that these bombs were designed to like route people in the city so they're not trying to flatten the city Ooh. they're just trying to like guide people by having destruction places maybe uh, maybe i like that so you could like lay out a whole bunch of bombs and create Green hazards yeah. and that funnels people or maybe even clickers in different directions true hmm. maybe i was filling in blanks yeah i like it i just like a lot of these shots of oh, yeah. the dilapidated city mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah great set Very design cool. and excellent computer graphics and everything mm -hmm. Strategically, in this open area, where would you walk? Oh, my gosh. Well, you're not really taking on humans, right, with guns and vision. You're taking on... True. Do we know if there are raiders? We don't know. There could be hostile people. Right. I mean, would you walk out in the middle of the... Okay, so walking out in the middle of the street announces your presence to humans, mm -hmm. saying, I'm not a threat, True. which could be good. You know. So now that you're not trying to sneak into their base. Right. So... You may want to walk in the middle of the street for that purpose. And then the, the clickers aren't really affected by that. So maybe that's the right move. Hmm. I guess depending on the degree of hostility that you're expecting. Like if you're walking through what should be your friend's territory, yeah, walk out in the open so they can see you coming. Yep. If you're walking in like known enemy, yeah, you can seek around. Yeah, then I think you stay in buildings, right? Or, or at least like hugging the wall hugging ready to wall. get out yeah yeah interesting how the tactics change depending on the situation depending on like the geography the time of day the anticipated threats the whole thing here yeah and so in this scene the the team the trio has just gone into this ritzy hotel and and ellie is just absolutely savage she is her words just i don't even know what this is have you heard of books Ooh. <laughs> she's, on, she's on it and that snap she snapped and looked at him god damn I mean, it's just, she's, she's trying to make a joke and she's just like I'm gonna hurt your feelings I'm gonna hurt your feelings <laughs> <laughs> fuck you surrogate dad <laughs> jeez so brutal and then she goes on and does this like silly stuff where she's pretending to be a rich person but but I think the most important part here is let's look Come let's on. look at this guy. You're a weird kid. Employee of the month. This person hung out here in the apocalypse, checking bags. Uh not enough respect is for, for this dude. 
He was trying to do customer service from beyond the grave. Mm-hmm. Those little bits of effort that change your experience at a hotel. That's right. That's why it's a ritzy place. They pay for high quality people to do high quality service. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, wait, can we go? Can we go? Uh, I was a little. I was blown away that they went in the water. That's right. That's right. So, have you ever had like water in your shoes and socks? Feels bad. It it feels bad, and you're. I actually had it when I was a kid. I had it for a day, and my feet got like really wrinkly oh. and odd. Mm. And it was like they were gonna. They might even get prone to cuts and stuff. Like it was. It was oh, very right. uncomfortable. You're making lots of noise with these squishy movements. Mm-hmm. It's. I think it's a really. It's not good. So. Yeah, it can lead to trench foot. Trench foot is that a, is that the thing? Yeah. So when soldiers would sit in trenches for days on end and they would have wet feet mm-hmm. they would make them gangrenous it would somehow be bad yeah. for the foot and then it could lead to amputation yeah so you need to dry your feet and your shoes and socks pretty i think mm-hmm. we have a picture if we keep going um there's yeah, ah, yeah. One. so this is here just they them are standing in the water pants right. all the way up to the crotch almost crazy mm-hmm. and if you go to the left this is later in the episode uh they're repairing or helping like they're they're Tess's wrapping Tess's ankle. ankle. Yeah, and the socks look fairly. The socks dry. They look dry. They look dry. So they must have taken. How long would it take for shoes and socks and pants to dry? I mean, we're talking. Depending on the climate, depending on like how hot and dry it is, but they're up in Boston in summer. I think it's a humid area. I've mm-hmm. been a while. So that must mean in their packs they have replacement shoes and socks, which I guess is plausible. I don't know. It's twenty years after the world falls apart. How many shoes have they got? That's true. That's why I was really surprised they went in the water. Wow. Right? Plus, really it's surprised. plus like normal bacteria is still around. Like, <laughs> that's you're right. Eating well, in that. That's right. Normal nature things that are going to get you are still around. Oh, around. Yeah. Fungal infection in your feet ain't going away in the apocalypse. <laughs> people scan you and you're like, you're like i i don't have like the the cordyceps fungus but like i do have athlete's foot, athlete's it, foot. Is it's athlete's foot. <laughs> it is kind of gross it is kind of gross so here on top of the roof ellie and tess and joel well i guess they're all up there but ellie and tess are talking and well i guess let's just listen the fungus also grows underground Long fibers like wires, some of them stretching over a mile. And you step on a patch of cordyceps in one place, and you can wake a dozen infected from somewhere else. So I thought about this. That means that these mycelium tendrils can be like a mile long, which means that you have to worry about, if you stepped on one, you'd have to worry about like a mile radius circle around you, and you could wake up, she said, a dozen. So I calculated that, and that comes out to be something around one infected per 121 American football fields. So that's like, I don't know, that seems like a very low estimate to me. If that's true, then I feel very comfortable walking outside. I hope that that low estimate doesn't come back to bite her. Agreed. I was, I was, I was, pre- I was prepping like I want to say something about the area. No, no, it's a come back to biter. That's true. Don't okay, activate... go ahead, go ahead <laughs> no. and say something about the area. <laughs> no, don't activate the fungus internet because it will come back to get you. Yeah. Yeah. So she said, "Why did she um, use the number 12? She said, "Up, up to twelve. A, a dozen. Yep, a yeah, dozen. A dozen. So not ten, not fifteen. Twelve. A dozen. Can you yeah. can you can you activate a baker's dozen? <laughs> of no. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Twelve. Well, and you know, at the end of the the episode, when mm-hmm. the the internet is active, it mm-hmm. it actually wakes up that whole horde. If you remember, at the end of the episode. So she said a dozen, but it could be up to thousands. It seems like. Thousands. She underestimated. Yeah. Maybe that's her experience. She's been sneaking around so long that sure. she only has onesie twosies. Yeah. Not hordesy hordesies. 
So this is actually a Bayesian problem of of her map of the world is based on her experiences, and she's just been very fortunate not to encounter many infected. That's right. Mm. So she could have hedged her statement with, you know, you can activate, you know, a dozen, you know, but that, that's what said, I've seen. Maybe you could even activate thousands. We don't know. She could throw that in there. I couldn't believe Joel was touching, even though it's dried out fungus and they think that's innocuous, he started to touch the dried out fungus roots or whatever these are with his bare hand. I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. I'd be scared to do it even if I knew it was dead. You know? I mean, I guess if there's like an animal or a plant, like a vine or something, if it's dried out and dead, well, I mean, it's dead, but if there are toxins do toxins degrade if they're dry i mean they degrade like over time just as anything does but like could you touch something that's dead and still have it have poison in it maybe do they have have they done studies i know that snake heads can still bite after they're actually decapitated like 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 the muscles mm-hmm. will still retract and like stab you mm-hmm. but i guess after how long of the, after the snake is dead is its venom still potent i don't know I mean, I, so they said, so Joel said, you know, it's not active because it's dry. Mm-hmm. I still think there would be some kind of heebie jeebiness Oh, yeah. Where you're like, oh, yeah. I just, I know it's dry. Let me poke it with a stick to verify. Yeah. Yep. Just not for any reason other than I don't want to touch it. I'm not sure. And I yet. think that's good procedure anyway. Yeah. Like your emotion is telling you, okay, good procedure. Get a stick, poke it. Yeah. You know. Because I guess there could be a chance where it's actually semi-alive inside and now you've touched it. Or, or even if alive doesn't even make sense for these. For example, with, with mushroom spores, they can dry out and last for, I don't know, 100 years, something like that. I don't know. They can last a long mm-hmm. time. And then you just rehydrate them and then they're back in the game. Right. So like he could be touching something that's dead and then it like flakes off on his hand. Later on, he goes to wash his hand, eat something, and now it's rehydrated and it's inside him. Yeah, then there's the issue. How is he going to wash his hands after touching this? There's not just like, oh, let me go do the wash station over. Like, there's no running water. There's no soap. There's, there's, we saw, we saw a hotel with dirty water. You don't want to wash your hand in that. Although I wonder after 20 years of poorly functioning um, municipal water systems, maybe people have built up an immunity. I mean, I think, you know, way back in the day before good sanitation, you know, good immunity die. is the occasional outbreak of cholera that wipes out 20% of the people. Yep. Yep. Ugh. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's why people died of sepsis all the time and why we have beer, because you couldn't keep your water clean. Oh, uh, yeah. I've heard something about that. So I wonder anyway. in the post-apocalypse, people would just party all the time because they're like, I need, I need water. Like, well, I can't get fresh water. Let's make some beer. Beer. And, and don't go around touching fungus. Don't touch things. Don't touch them. I mean, even if I find mushrooms, I don't barehand it, even though, because some of them are poisonous. I guess, I just, I guess if I, if I wanted to go mushroom hunting, which is totally a thing, right? Totally. You mm-hmm. can, I would do my research on the internet and then also get a local guide, get a local guy who knows what, what fungus appears in that area and they can help mm-hmm. you through. Yeah. For, for example, this hen in the woods. This is like a mushroom that grows in dry woods. And there's also chicken of the woods. Apparently this tastes like chicken. Who doesn't taste like chicken? But yeah, just do your research. Get a specialist to come with you. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, don't touch things. Don't touch things. The more colorful they are, don't touch them. Don't touch them. And this is known to infect humans. Don't touch it. (laughs) <laughs> that's a good point yeah hen of the woods is known to be delicious this thing is known to kill you don't touch it yeah so for for this this is the scene where joel tells ellie and i guess and tess but tess knows to be silent he's like silent, silent. from now on silent not whisper not quiet silent silent yeah. right and i was thinking okay so the the clickers can hear. They have very sensitive hearing. 
So why weren't we being silent the whole time we were wandering through the city? Even though they, assuming there's no clickers around to hear, they don't necessarily know that. So why are we silent now? That's right. So we, first question is, do they know that clickers exist? Or is this like the first time they're encountering them and like discovering that clickers exist? Well, I, I assume that Joel and Tess had been out on the town a lot. So Warning. So then they should know that so, clickers exist. And then you can't see around corners, but you can hear around a corner. So yeah. you got to be running silent just all the time. Right. And maybe there's variations on running silent. Mm -hmm. But if I remember, they were like talking loudly and jumping loudly and all kinds of stuff, yelling loudly. And now they're going into silent. Maybe there's a little like, okay, whispering is now okay. You know? Yeah. If you're like an open field and you can see around like, all right, let's just talk a little bit. We'll talk a little bit, but we'll yeah. keep it, keep it low. Yeah. But they did. It seems to be like once they've discovered that a clickers may be present, they went into full silent mode. It seems to be bad procedures in my book. I mean, that could be too late. Right. That's right. Hmm. The only thing I could think of is that Joel and Tess have been around the block enough to know, okay, there's no clickers in this building. There's no clickers in that building. So it's okay to be loud. Well, then you would just but, avoid the quiet ones. Always. You would just avoid the clicker rooms. Like if you know where they guess, are, you would just avoid them. <laughs> but even then, you, you know, 99% of the time, there's no clickers in the building. Right. You can't assume clickers right. seem to wander around. So you never know. And this is a life and death game. Yeah. Like, like just like a prey animal, like leaves as soon as there's danger. This is your life or your death. Like you have to mm -hmm. be precautious all the time. Right. Right. Prey animals will leave the scene before the predator even is aware of them. Right. Yeah. So Ellie, Ellie is a savage. They, they like figure out that you need to be quiet and she, this is how she reacts. Have you heard of books? And so if you look at Joel, like he shoots into this this um, infected stomach and then I guess maybe he doesn't know yet that you need headshots, but should they be running around with long bladed sharp weapons? Because like just sever the head. But are, could with the long blade weapons, couldn't they, aren't they worried about blood and fluids getting on them? So you if you're close quarters taken off a head and there's fluid, body Spray. fluids coming okay. all over you. Maybe that's suboptimal. But oh, then man. with guns, there's still back spray. Yeah, and and well, and that you have to be pres and the less back spray there is because you're farther away. Well, that means that you need to be more accurate, which is now a challenge. So maybe with Joel, he's taking a real chance here with back spray. Maybe he should have just given the thing a shove, and off Ooh. they go the other direction. Or they could do the full face shield. Riot gear. Yeah. Well, you know, like those face shields that a lot of people did in the pandemic, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Just that yeah. to stop the back spray. Mm hmm maybe. So maybe you want full hazmat suit. Because you don't, I mean, I mean, do we know how this is transmitted other than bites? I think we do. I think it's just bites. Like if a, if a infected, like, spits blood at you for whatever reason, like, would that infect you? What if I was to like take a thousand clickers, put them in a blender, make a bath out of their nasty fluid, yeah. Yeah. and then take a bath in it? Well, they didn't bite me, so I guess I'm good. I guess I'm good. I feel like you get infected. Maybe you just put your feet in, and as long as you don't have a cut, it's okay. But you have orifices. In your feet? I guess not in your feet. So it's up up to the asshole and up then, the asshole yep and then you're good and you're good i love it <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, yeah. yeah so this i was like doesn't joel need a clip he yeah you have pre-clipped the i don't know what the term is you put the bullets in the clip you put the and bullets you, in the clip then, then you, you shove you, it in the gun then yeah. what song is, this? That, um, is that a song I don't know. I just made it up. Revolver, moon 
clip, speed, mm -hmm. strip, and speed loader. All three of these. Mm -hmm. There's three types of things that people use for, for revolvers. There are mm -hmm. speed loaders. These things, yeah. these are annoying because you have to like jam them in, then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until the bullets are released. Mm -hmm. There are speed strips like this thing. But yeah. the the, the bummer about this is that they're in a line, although good for yeah. your pocket, but you have to like two way to time it. And then there are what you were saying were moon clips. Moon clip is yeah. like this, where they you you preload them in a six or however many cylinders your your revolver mm -hmm. has, and you just drop the whole thing in quick. I feel like if say you didn't have any of these clips available, mm -hmm. which one would be easiest to manufacture if you had some scrap metal or something? Maybe the moon clip? I think the moon I'm clip. I'm not sure. I think the moon clip. Because but you'd have to make something to keep the bullets organized so that in this situation you're not like thumbing them in while, <laughs> you know. Or organized and also not rattling. Loose ammo That's in your true. pocket and you step around just clink 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 clink. Now the clickers hear you. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you, you just you have just... Oh. A bunch of single pockets with one bullet in so if you need an additional one you just do one at a time maybe that's fast you mean like each pocket has its own bullet yeah i guess so I <laughs> it, it's like a it's like a what is it like that old game where like like you play doctor you have to like put the the tweezers in there and like pull out the bone it's like that like a bunch of different oh. locations <laughs> for each mm -hmm. bullet <laughs> one yeah. at a time <laughs> either way joel was not prepared for this not ready and for this. Now he's doing like an awkward reload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he can't yeah. see in the dark, so he needs to keep his flashlight on, which is like, he need a third hand. Yeah. Guns with mags. That's the way to go. Maybe that's not available. Maybe he, he had no choice, you know. That's true, because he has his own private gun, which he hid in his floor, right? Like, yeah. Fedra probably rounded up all the other guns, and then those guys have mm -hmm. the magazine guns. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, so this picture. Um, Joel is just about to kill the clicker, and I looked at his head, and this really looks like Hen of the Woods. Yeah, it really does. They must have taken inspiration. Cause, I think so. I mean, super creepy. When he gets that headshot, I'm like, click, click, mm -hmm. motherfucker. Boom, headshot. Oh, yeah, this. Ellie was like, oh, yeah, we just encountered clickers. This is not scary. I was like, Ellie, this is terrifying. Ellie, this You've is got terrifying. like rusted out 20-year-old ladders, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. 100 feet or whatever, 50 feet in the air. And you're mm -hmm. like, this isn't scary. I'm like, it's scary. That it's thing, scary. This is scary. you're putting your life in the hands of a minimum 20-year-old ladder that's been exposed to the elements. Mm -hmm. Rained on, UV... Who mm -hmm. knows what? So the, this ladder is act. It's not secured to anything. It's just sitting on the scaffolding, <laughs> like a little gust of wind. That thing falls over. I hope it got to be secured. No way. These panels. The, these are wood panels. In mm -hmm. the rain, this thing degrades. It's, it absorbs water, loses water, heats and swell and and swells and shrinks in the heat and cold. Yep. This wood would be falling apart. And scaffolding. Scaffolding is designed to be broken down quickly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like welded together tight. Yeah. So the, summary, Ellie's a badass. Just so bold. She's, she's just like, whatever. She's risking her life and the future of humanity. Just walking across. Just walking across. Yep. And if you go to the left, they do it again. Ooh. Yep. They have this ladder here that they're like, I'm just going to put all my human weight on it. And if, if it's rusted out and collapses on me, I, it's a ladder. It should hold together. I was right. like, oh, what are you guys doing? And clearly there's no anchor point up here. So the yeah. anchor point to the wall must be down lower, which yeah. means if he leans back a little bit, there's a torque hole pulling out from the wall. Mm -hmm. This could rip the whole ladder down the, down, down the face That's of the building. Right. And even if you've trusted this many times before, it's out in the elements, UV, rusting, who knows what. It's not going to survive forever. So you need to give that That's a good right. test every time. Every time. Give it a little wiggle. Yep. I was upset with their procedures. What a cowboy. and Just freestyling. Just cowboy. In there. Yeah. Can't win if you don't try. So do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
super cool set. Looks yeah, super looks cool. looks like the vegetation has taken over the life, and I guess trees are doing real good. Um, what what drew my attention in the scene is that these cars are like. I get I get this the pandemic or it's the apocalypse, but this is some real bad parking. Like this is not in <laughs> this is not in the the like craze of like people are running around because then cars would be everywhere. This is just right. this is just how the street is normally and then people didn't go after these cars. Right. Um but I guess this is Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's they consistent. Don't... Yeah, that's is that consistent. That's about, that's about how they park. So I was looking at this car right here on the left. Um right down here what a dick look at what that parking dick. job what a dick he's like up he's got like his back right wheel up on the curb up on the curb that's the pedestrians only yeah. <laughs> that's just you know that's a bad come crime on. back in pre-pandemic times i was also i also noticed when we talked about tactics they're walking down the center of the street mm -hmm. which means we're interpreting this as they're expecting to encounter friendlies who are human. So they're mm -hmm. announcing their presence mm -hmm. and staying away from the buildings where clickers could hide. Mm. So that's that's our read on the tactical situation there. Also, even I mean, it's pretty good to walk down the middle of the road because they have all these cars for cover. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But what if there was like a sniper up here in like that building? Oh, that's an easy shot then. It's an easy shot, right? Yeah. And then you've got them pinned down if you just lay down fire. So I guess really the cars. only what you should do is travel at night. But that's scary. Yeah, dark is scary, but Well does <laughs> does the night degrade you more than the clickers? I think the night degrades humans more than the clickers. Agreed. But if we're worried about about human to human threats, unless mm -hmm. they have night vision or thermals then yeah. they're also disadvantaged. That's right. And so so someone up here in that building with a sniper rifle, they just have clear advantage over me on the ground because I, I can't see them. Right. So this is another reason to think that this is consistent with the three of them expect friendlies only. Right. right. This scene... Ah, the first thing is they go into this room where there's like guns and a bunch of equipment on the ground. And, and Tess, Tess is my girl. Like, she knows what's up. She's been in a loot room before. The first thing... like Let's look. Let's look at all the guns in the room and see what Tess mm -hmm. does. Okay. I mean, there's got to be a, a fucking radio or something, right? That's right. Loot. <laughs> Tess... What are you doing? Loot. Check, checking the loot, loot boxes. Loot, loot, loot. Even if this wasn't the, the apocalypse. Loot. <laughs> like, right. You got well, all these cool guns. Your inventory is full. So you got to check all the boxes and prioritize what you're going to take. Mm-hmm. 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 All this stuff you don't want, put them in these cargo boxes. Get them out of there. Yeah. Sell them to your favorite vendor. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, you got to make multiple trips back and forth to town. Mm -hmm. Every to sell, every time I enter scrap. a room, I RPG, I just check every box in that room. Yep. Behind the door, maybe, 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 maybe there's gonna be some. Maybe the best loot's gonna be behind the door. Oh yeah, I, this I was really so. There's so much here in terms of supplies. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's they end up blowing it up in the panic. They blow it all of it. Yeah. But it would be hard to not come back and make these a priority. You know, I would at least shove the the containers and whatever somewhere so maybe if i came back i could get it oh you make a cache to... what's that you'd make a cache hide it in yeah. some room that's like unex un un expecting it's it's like oh, a hidden yeah. place hidden place yeah somewhere you wouldn't expect somebody to look right because it's worth so i mean it's it's not just worth a little bit like oh i could get rid of these supplies it's worth so much so much because you can't remake any of these no Right, there's like these those lights. Can't remake that. How are you it gonna get like, fuel? Yeah, it looks like there's fuel. Let's see here. So if I if I can circle some stuff here, I see fuel barrels. Is that right? Fuel barrels. Yep. Yep. And ammo, maybe, and maybe yep. some weapons over here. Mm-hmm. 
and then and then these light stands. Am I draw, am I not drawing on the right one? I don't I don't see you drawing. What is going on? I'm drawing, oh, but it's not. It just updated. updated. Okay, it's, it's there. You go. Okay. Yeah. So these things I circled. There's on the left. There's light stand. Mm -hmm. And then the middle looks like maybe ammo. And then fuel just to the right of that. And then looks like maybe just general supply crates on the right. There's just so much good stuff here. And mm -hmm. they leave it all behind. Look at all these shoes. 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 That's a good point. That's a great shoe, point. Shoelaces. You can make a fortune if you go back to that city. <laughs> just don't, don't worry about anything else. Just take the shoelaces. <laughs> and Fetcher's like, where'd you get all these shoelaces? This is suspicious. It's suspicious, yeah. <laughs> you, got a, you got a shoelace factory outside of town? Like, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> well, they already ruined a pair of shoes by going in that water. Oh, it's going to be funky. They, and we assumed they had a replacement set of shoes in shoes and socks in their backpack so they could cycle them out. So they're going to need to keep getting shoes. Yeah. 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 Plus, those are like boots. Those, those are nice. Are boots. And uh, let's see. There's one there. One there. Get, get some. Everybody. Everybody is two shoes. Two shoes. So that's, we're looking at five pairs of shoes on this shot right here. Just this angle. There's maybe more people around. Yeah. That might even be priority number one because they're easy to get right now. Yeah. Whereas the, uh, the boxes yeah. and the fuel are harder to transport. Yep. Shoes, I can shop in my bag. Barrel full of gasoline. Cannot. Too Cannot, big. No. Yeah, so many good supplies. Good point. I forgot about the shoes. <laughs> Specifically, the shoelaces. Shoelaces. <gasps> go, go. I can't. Yeah, yeah. So this is the brutal scene where Tess is like, I'm infected. And then if you go to the left, Joel's reaction he doesn't really know how to process it. He's just like, I'm going to shut down again. But then Tess doesn't let him, like, shut down. She's like, no, you need to have hope. Tess, you know, this is real. Believe it. And I was like, she's oh. The best. She's the Tess looking best. out for him in her last moments. She, like, she like understands him, like, who he is and what he needs. Mm -hmm. Show me. He knows it right away. Yeah. As soon as he like thought she was affected, like he immediately kept his distance. Like, yeah, it's a death sentence, and yeah. it's a death sentence for her and a potential death sentence for him. So like, yeah, you can see in his brain like she just changed from being a person to like, oh, I. Yeah. And like she takes i mean i guess everybody in this society is kind of on the edge of death at all times mm -hmm. but she was she's like all right it's my time and she yeah. makes sure they get they get out of there in her, she her says, last act she says joel save who you can yeah tess so calm so collected she mm -hmm. got the the big picture in her mind yeah mm. i'd watch a spinoff with just her yeah oh yeah the adventures of tess See see what all those bad things were like the hijinks that she got into back in the day when she's yeah. like now now regretting it. I need I need I need something lighthearted. <laughs> like that's, that's consistent with her personality as she was getting into hijinks post fungal <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe okay, maybe pre pre pandemic. It's been the nastiest kiss of all time. Why did, like, I, why did she like let... It's like the, the reverse lady in the tramp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just ruined that movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> why did Tess let the, the zombie guy kiss her? Yeah, like, close your mouth, turn to the side, slap Give him. Give him a shove. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She lets him kiss. Weird. Yeah, weird. Ugh. Also, but also maybe plausible, like he's not attack the the, the mm -hmm. infected is not attacking her, and maybe the fungus the cordyceps has controlled its mind and it's like it knows to try to spread it around just like just like how the the um, fungus kills ants where it tells them mm -hmm. to climb up trees. Same thing here. Maybe it tells the guy to go kiss her. 
I was also thinking, does this is this are they telling us here that the infected are somehow sentient, maybe in a different way? So oh. they're not human sentient, but they're cordyceps plus human sentient. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what I was thinking. That the the fungus knows how to like trigger some human response so that the human goes and does what it wants. Like like it's mm -hmm. not telling humans to walk, to run, to attack. It's telling it like like mm -hmm. here's some chemistry in your brain now react appropriately mm -hmm. and and so sometimes it'll be chase it sometimes it'll be go kiss her mm -hmm. okay but that what i'm saying is they're not just maybe well, the they're, they're, they're not just robots that are just ready to be killed because they have no sentience oh i see. I mean i don't know i know we, i know we don't really understand as a human species what sentience right. and intelligence right. and free will are but Maybe it's a different sentience, but something like, that's worth like keeping. A, like a half sentience. Like no, I'm if, saying a if, full if, sentience, just different. Oh, oh, yeah. So why are we not saying that this is just a new life form? Right. That's right. We we have species on Earth, animals, and I guess also plants, that have full on symbiotic symbiotic life cycles. So we could just call this one too. Yeah. And in a sense we are like that. We have thousands and thousands of types of uh, gut bacteria bac bacteria with, on our skin in our gut all over the place it, yeah. that are essentially symbiotic with us does that make us less sentient because we're infected in fact i guess we have some special type of sentience where we have billions of microbes inside us <laughs> they're, right. they're part of us yeah yeah in summary maybe the kiss isn't gross it's mm -hmm. just you know romeo and juliet situation Oh, kind of like the, yeah, it's biological Borg. Oh, yeah. They actually, they may have a collective consciousness, you don't know. That's right. The, it's internet. the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not just kissing this guy. She's kissing everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't like it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the supplies the supplies yeah and i'm hoping that tess finds a way to survive this because she's my favorite character and i want her back also i was like wouldn't the the supply cache and the zombies burn it like went up in this explosion i was like how did tess set that up she had she like dumped the fuel threw the grenades on there lit it and instead of just burning into this inferno it just i was confused well, on the mechanism there i guess there there is like when combustion reactions there is like a flash point which I, mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right word for this but it's like when the uh, mixture of oxygen and the fuel in the room is just right you get like a like a slow burn slow burn and then the right mixture and then like rapid explosion so it's not really the grenades it could be the vapors exploding. i think so yeah uh, so the grenades were unnecessary and they that's wasted grenades yeah right you get you get uh, you get zombies in there. You get infected guys going throwing mm -hmm. them around like hot pocket. Like you don't know what to do with it now. Yeah, actually, I don't even know if grenades can be thermally popped off like that, um, or if this is enough of them, uh, enough temperature for it to pop off. Um, yeah. Like, do you have to pull the pin, or if the pin is still in there but hot, like will it right. still if stay I, stable? I don't, if I, don't I had know. a grenade at my next camping trip and I just threw it in the fire, how long would it take for it to explode, or would it not? You go on a camping trip and everyone brought fireworks and you're like, me too. But you know, yours is a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next camp trip, we're all bringing a different type of grenade. Test yeah. this out. Yeah, we said smoke grenades. Yeah, you're like, smoke this, bitches. <laughs> First one to lose a limb wins. Oh. Oh. No, no. Don't what do that. Test comes back. I like Tess is so good. Joel is losing all the important... A woman, a woman and his daughter in his life. Just mm -hmm. losing him. Losing him. And we don't know all the pain he went through in the intervening 20 years. So, And and she loved him and he did not love her back. I mean, I get it. Emotional trauma and stuff. But like, Tess. I think I think he loved her back in, his, oh, she, in, a, in, a, in a way oh, in that his, he could. In his own way. Okay. okay. But not, not but in like. Not what she wanted. Not what she, not what she wanted. Or what, yeah. But he wasn't capable of it maybe mm -hmm. but i wouldn't say that he didn't love her at all it's true there is some type of connection there and not just yeah. friends yeah 
Is there any more? Is that it? I think that's it. That's it. Moving on to episode three. Joel and Ellie are now hitting the road. Hmm. Tessa's going to find some way to get back into it. I, I, I know it. That's going to happen. Uh, that's, that's what I want to happen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. It'd have to be a prequel. Maybe. Oh, maybe she comes back. Maybe she that kiss from the from the zombie. Maybe that gives her superpowers, regenerative powers, and she comes back. Fire does not hurt her anymore. I mean, it's not Dragon Ball Z where like everything that happens, it gets you like <laughs> love, love, love. You hear in the distance. <laughs> ah, she comes. She comes running up. <laughs> For the rest of the entire season one, just, ah, <laughs> just yeah. charging up. <laughs> no, I think she's she's done. She's done, Zoe. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't like it. Okay. So now we're off to find, uh, what were the names? Billy and Frank? Yep. Bill and Frank. Bill, Bill and, and Frank. Frank, somewhere out there in the West, they'll take Ellie to uh, some medical research scientist and we'll maybe get some cure, save humanity. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. See you, right. see you next time. See you. Last of Us yeah. Season 1, Episode 3. Next time. Next time.